How much power is too much power? In today's video, we're gonna find out. Hey guys, Matt DeWitt from MWD Adventures. We're on this channel, we're all about the small camper life, the lifestyle, the gadgets, the gadgets, and all the things that make camping so much fun. We're here to inspire you to hopefully you'll get out and do a little more camping. Jeff did an amazing job making this trailer his own. It's quite a lengthy video. Get out your notepad, you're gonna to wanna to take notes on this one. This is amazing, all the different modifications. I even learned stuff myself, and I've seen a lot of hiker trailers, or small trailers in general. So whether you have a hiker trailer or another trailer, I'm sure you can pick up a mod or two from his woodworking and electrical skills. So with that, let's get rolling in today's video. Hi, my name is Jeff Legassi. Uh, this is our new trailer, the Park Addict. We've had it since December. I've been doing mods on it until about two weeks ago. Um, we've just completed our 10th night in it um, on our second trip now. First one was a nine day, nine night stay in uh, Smoky Mountain National Park. In, uh, where it rained most of the time, so we got to proof it in, uh, I won't say adverse conditions, but challenging conditions. So I'll uh, we'll try to cover all the mods. I might get lost and forget some, so here we go. All uh, right, what you got going in the front? A, a fairly a nice articulating hitch. I'm towing it with a F-150, so it's not like we're gonna get into a lot of situations. But uh, Catalucci, North Carolina, uh, has some nice tight turns and some terrain there, so it's nice to have. So you got the big tire on the front. Got the big tire on the front. Um, I didn't want it underneath for the problems that most people have. If you have to access it, you know, it becomes problematic behind the trailer. Sure, sure. Now, what size toolbox should go with there? Uh, the big toolbox, of course. Okay. There's no other size. Um, and it's pretty well full. I'll pop it open. Sure. No electrical in here. I just got stuff. I got air compressor in here. Um, Harbor Freight, right in Columbus, oh, yeah. Indiana. Yep. Uh, just for the uh, shower. Cool. So, going around the outside, looks like you got a 270 awning. Yes, I love it. We had the walls on for the first time uh, down in North Carolina, and uh, we were amazed how much space it provides, especially when you use the mid wall tie outs to pull it away from. And uh, there's a lot of space on me. So, do you recommend the 270 awning? If you can get it, yes. Yep. Yeah, I, I understand there might be some supply chain issues with it right now, especially the walls. Yep. Um, so absolutely, we're happy with it. So it looks like you got a mod right here on the outside. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, <clears throat> just a plug. Um, this has its own switch on the inside, no dimmer associated, but uh, a place to put some lights. And the thought process on that was I, w I wanted a small American flag right here someplace, and I was going to have a dedicated light for that once I mount it. Sure. Can't have a flag out there unless you have a light on it. So, yep. and that would stay on 24/7. Uh, and it looks like you got yourself real safe with a fire extinguisher. Of course. I like yeah, that. They were. That's a good mod. They were on sale um, when I was going through Home Depot, and I found a nice, uh, sturdy uh, uh, stainless mount for it. So, uh, and uh, it pairs up nicely when I open the door, and the bungee just kind of wraps around it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you got little bungee hooks. Yes. Very yep, nice. Got that from the factory. Nice. That's added right to the toolbox. Very cool. Oh, um, back to the toolbox. Um, you turned me on to this. Um, you were a big fan of the the LED company uh, 8 EVP. Oh, 8 EVP or Osfo will drive. Yes. Yep. So this is one of the many. Oh, lights yeah. I have there. those are nice. Yes. Love those lights. One now, of my favorites. What I didn't think about doing was adding jacks like you did on your toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually did, I poked holes in my trailer. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I waterproof those well. So uh, good. So this is my only electrical in, in, in the toolbox. Okay, cool. Stuff. But, uh, so I see a bunch of wood things here. Yes. It looks like you like to do some woodworking. I do. It's uh, like an affliction of mine. I, I, I call it just making sawdust. And sometimes I get stuff out of it. <laughs> but um, so the trailer's name is a park hack. These are parks we've been to. Um, we haven't camped at a lot of these. A couple of them we have, but uh, we're looking at fixing that. So uh, we had more parks, but we only had so much wood. Very cool. And uh, this table actually is dual use. 
I had a different mount system until the day before we came here and I changed it. Okay. This is actually double sided tape to the wall and we just can't leave it on there. But the table was always at an angle and the tape started giving way at the bottom. So I just actually took a bolt, went through the fender and there's a wing nut on the bottom side. So before we leave, I'll take the wing nut off and put it away. Oh, gotcha. And I painted the edges of my new cut in the fender. So hopefully it gives some waterproof resistance. Very cool. So in small campers, everything has to have a dual use or more. Yep. So this started off as a side table. So this, com this design comes off of a Dunn, D-U-N-N, D-I-Y. They're a lumber Ooh. company out in Northwest uh, U.S. Ooh. And uh, I just did a spoof off that. So that goes right next to our t uh, chairs. Nice. It's basically a small dining table. I like it. And then I'll just prop it back up there. Yep. Let's see here. Let me see. It was kind of a happy accident because the the outside boards just fit on the angle of the fender, mm. ideally. But like I said, happy accident. I got, <laughs> I got lucky. So I like there. So nice. you can put it. And that way, you know, I've done enough magnets and making magnets meet up with other things and magnets always come unglued so it's not a perfect uh, situation and I just wanted to avoid all those strong magnets on the fender yeah, yeah. and I think this will hold up better over time so good 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 so looking on the outside here you got two propane mounts yeah um, so what's the reasoning behind okay. that yeah I got two tanks and um, the trailer is still being built and I kind of already set on the fact that I needed a propane fire pit because we we're going to spend a lot of time out west and burn restrictions and stuff. That was going to be a must have. No wood fires. And I didn't want to burn the propane out of my um, stovetop tank for the risk of running out of propane. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that fear was well founded because I discovered we can get six days of propane out of the fire pit and it goes empty. So we had three dark nights in Catalucci, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> so it was okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it cost me $6 to fill up the tank. Well, you can't beat that. So it cost more to drive to the location to get the propane than, yep. than otherwise. So just dual mounts and two tanks next two to Two tanks. Other. You know, it, it looks like it's excessive, but um, it works out. And you got a nice shelf there for your lantern. Yep. Yeah. It works and, out well. I just stuck it there uh, today for the first time. So, cool. And empty water bottles. All right. So, tell us about this amazing table. I think it's more light in here. Um, <clears throat> I saw the the side tables that Hiker was providing and wondered, why is that thin? Boy, is that short. Boy, is that narrow. And wonder if I could do better. So I never actually bought one from them. I didn't even have the side mounts. I, I asked for those at the last second from them. But uh, figured I would figure out how much space I had in the galley and start designing the table for that. So uh, I also thought it'd be nice to have our utensils available at the, at the cooking location versus stepping back over to the trailer. So um, I had to pack flat, but I was able to find a way to put the uh, the slide out um, just like kitchen kitchen drawer at home very very cool and uh yes this is plastic i have in mind a way uh, a wooden one I, i'm gonna make at home at some point maybe over the winter um but the room wasn't built in a day and then where do you store this when you're traveling this comes up pops out matter of fact i'll do it for you i'll demonstrate this one goes down this one comes up this comes out and much like everything on this countertop, it gets tetris in, right? Yep. Uh, these aren't normally there. And it slides to the left. So four and a half is kept in place by the wall of the trailer. That in turn keeps all the, um, the wet ones, the dish detergent, the cooking spray in place. And I have these foam blocks that you may have seen in the toolbox. That gets filled in with all the extra spaces so it doesn't move. Um, on the other side of the trailer we haven't seen yet, you get the wash basins. Um, this closes up and that sets right next to it flat. Okay. Um, and the wash basins go again uh, for against the wall. And it all stays uh, pretty tight. 
there. And then these walls, I'll detach one of them. So sometimes they're hard to pull out. Each one of these pop out. Wow. They'll lay on the utensil drawer inside the galley when we're moving. That way this folds up flat and we tuck up underneath. Wow, that's cool. So the, the, the legs here um, will come apart from each other and I have the magnets on these. This one folds up and stays and there's another place for the lower one just to go up and stays in place and you can shake the table, it's not coming out until you physically pull it out. Very cool. So I got excessive underneath with the honeycombing. <laughs> um, it was a, the thought process was to remove some weight. Yep. Um, I'm not sure how successful I was at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but mm. uh, so there's one latch under in place, and before you to latch it, you just push this into a, a wood sl slat, okay. I guess, and that holds it. Now, we'll guess you could break it just by leaning on it. But sure. Then I get to make another one. Yeah. That is a cool design. Get that. that. Oh, that works. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Then on the outside, it looks like you added some more USBs up yeah, top. Yeah, uh, this one, the USB port, and I got one down below too. Oh, okay. With the thought process of plugging in the fridge. Sure. If you're in the environment, we're not going to have critters come in to yep. wreak havoc. This one, let's see, it's on a oh, dimmer. Oh, we got it to dim your lights. Yeah. Okay. Not knowing what eventually I was going to have plugged into it. Sure. Yep. Um, Very cool. So. Every light switch I have is on a dimmer in this trailer. Oh, ah, okay. So I know that's been a problem, especially with these exterior lights. Yep. So. Uh, yep. All right. That, that got designed early in on the in the process. So what do we got going on in the galley? Oh Lord. Um, <laughs> where to start? Yeah, where to start? Let's go high to low. Okay. Uh, so I know Wendy's a big fan of her plastic boxes up there. She is. Yep. I tried to um, steer clear of plastic. Um, just because I, I have some ability to make some other. Um, I got five boxes up here. You can only pull out the free metal. The other ones end up sitting behind the ledge here. Sure. But uh, they all have kind of a purpose, and the symbols just help remember what's in each one of them. So the first aid is pretty much just bug spray and the various iterations of that. This one smells like coffee because that's what we got in there. <laughs> toilet wipes, everything toilet wise is behind the Bigfoot. Okay. Um, and, and this one, this is the largest one. All the others are the same size. Okay. I just checked to see how much space there was remaining and designed this one to fill its space. So they all Tetris in there. Boom. And the, this front ledge is high enough so that it retains things. Nice. So it goes nowhere. Very nice. Now, before we leave the top shelf, on the left side, I have a circuit breaker um, mod for the solar panel. Because mm. they have to have a way of removing power if you need to do maintenance and such. Yep. So, um, and here I don't have a light with me. Um, so you just flip up the store. And then I can cut the power to the main panel. Oh, right. And this is for the side um, um, access port. But then again, you can just unplug it and, and sure. remove power that way. But uh, So that's a safety mechanism there. And then I put a little bar down below just to help these line up. So it doesn't smash anything in the corner. Yes. Or, or get cattywampus and jamming up and otherwise. So we have a Keurig in here and we enjoy a morning coffee. So I put in a K cup holder. Oh my gosh. I made it out of scrap wood. It stretches well, of the length here. You, did. you can have 19 K cup pods up oh there. My gosh. <laughs> so moving down just a little bit and get some light switches on the other side and, and down here. Um, those are fairly uh, widely available on uh, Amazon. 
I get a white light and an amber light. Oh yeah. Now, in the off season, I'm probably gonna replace those with uh, the um, Oz lights. Just oh, because sure, with the, a push button? No, I'll mm -hmm. still go hard wire version so oh, I sure. can use my dimmers and on off switches. Yep. I just, the amber one uh, is intermittent sometime and I'll have to come over here and press in the right location to get it oh, started sure. back on. I know screening uh, your windows were problems, so that was, I've always wanted sliding windows instead of the swing out door windows. So uh, this is actually my second screen. The first one was hexagon and said, oh, that looks nice, but let's have something more camping related. So went on the internet, found a design of a beer claw that I liked and uh, turned it into a window screen. That is cool. And this is just leftover screen from rescreening windows at home. Oh, nice. Um, and I had to play around with the width uh, and the depth. So this would fit in real nice. And I got all that stuff written down at home now, so I can just go in and pop a new design in cut the board the same size and then uh, do the design, do a lot of sanding, lots of sanding, and then finish it and pop the screen in. So you don't have it as a pass-through galley, just the screen. Oh, look at that. So, so it is a pass-through galley. It is. <clears throat> so, wow. This is my first parked attic sign. I didn't do anything fancy to it. It's just plain wood and finishing. I reach inside the cabin to try to grasp that door and close yep. it. Nothing wow. rattles open, stays closed. Very, very so, cool. I like that a lot. So it works well. Yep. Um, now looking just beyond this threshold, you'll see a, a piano wire um, hinge. Um, this is actually the battery bank lies in underneath that, also with a shelf inside. Okay. So uh, I get this whole tray and I got lots of photos I took along the way. I have my iPad I can show you and show with you. Cool. Um, so off to the right. This whole area? Yeah, that was kind of spice an afterthought. Rack? A spice rack, yep. Let me see, did I? I think I added some tape there, so it was still put. Um, yeah, we need a place of spices, right? So mm -hmm. uh, my goal was to have this galley ready to go. You pull out the drawer, pull out the stove, and then, then boom, you, you're done. Um, so I just kind of built that from scraps at home. I'm not sure if I like the final design, but that's what winter's for, just redoing that. Mm -hmm. uh, same with the paper towel holder and, and the whole side thing. And it's through adversity that you figure out, you know, a better way of doing things. So we just have to live through the adverse times and, mm -hmm. and go from there. Cool. Now, another mod over here you haven't even seen yet because you haven't had the angle. <laughs> so, wow. uh, being a ham radio guy, you know, this is kind of like second nature, especially building radio boxes and stuff. So, yeah, it kind of lives over there in the corner, but I could just put this right up here. Ah. Or out here. <clears throat> so, what do we have left to right there, connector-wise? And, and, well, first of all, it starts off with an Anderson. Anderson power pole, so I can plug this in anywhere to give it the right adapter. Let me plug this back in, and it's on its own fuse, so I don't have to worry about anything else there. Oh. Boom. So you get the standard uh, USB with the voltage. Uh, a couple more USBs here. Now I can replace those anytime I want based on what my needs are. Sure. An Anderson power pole port, just a single. I didn't need the double. And just a generic 12 volt uh, plug um, that you can plug in uh, USB-C port adapters or, or whatever you happen to need in the location. Very nice. And this is from leftover scrap maple I had from doing everything else. And it has its own fuse right there. So, just um, the standard light. Just the standard, yep. very, very bright light. Yep. Yep. Enormously bright. Yes. Um, and the water pump switch I relocated to, to make. Sure. Next for this. Take room. Yep. So um, you got the table pull out. To get the table pull out, uh, of which I have maybe some regrets. Only, you know, it's nice, it's big, but if I have these walls up, I can only get the the door to open up to right about here. So then we have some inner interplay interaction between the corner here and the door. So to do it again, I would bias it full right and maybe yep. make it a little narrower. Sure. All right, what you got? So let's go here. down the bottom here. Uh, geez, where to start? Okay, so most of these two out of these three panels come back because of magnets attachments. 
water pump was originally uh, mounted on the floor. So I put that up and then uh, the day before our first trip we realized I had the piping wrong and the input was the output and the output was the input. So that took us a few minutes before we started heading for our trip. But I got that fixed with some extra tubing and then uh, got on away. Extra fuses, these are just ways to route um, quick disconnects to the main electrical system behind us here. Um, I got the circuit breaker, not circuit breaker, the, the fuse panel um, right up against that wall. To do it over again, I would put that in a more accessible location because it's easy to do when you're building this out. It's hard to access and address things when something goes wrong. Sure. So um, I guess hikers put now putting their fuse panel up in the middle shelf. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yep. Yep. Absolutely great idea. That way, if you want to wire something else, it's, it's easy to get to. So I'll leave this out. Um, this is our AC to DC uh, charger, 45 amp. Um, we have uh, three lithium ion phosphate batteries for a total of 300 amps. So wow. I figured if we were to plug in short power, it wouldn't take us more than a couple, three hours to, to charge off. But uh, once this left the garage, um, I haven't touched commercial power since. So that's pretty much July. Wow. And uh, I don't ever see the need to plug back into commercial until it goes back into the garage. This is permanently mounted, well, I say that by screws because weight bearing on that. Sure. Behind it is a uh, 2000 watt inverter because we needed that to run the Keurig. These things right here, these are just like tiny extensions to get into the inverter. Um, so one's for the coffee. Oh, the other one's shore power coming in. Um, so it's just easier to plug in and do the work in advance. So other than that, we have this whole back wall here. And it's tough to get this panel out. I may have to take this no, out. No, no, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, master on off switch, battery, basically a battery kill switch right there. We'll get a 300 amp breaker. Uh, it's separating the battery from the entire system. We uh, went with the Victron uh, components and been very happy with them. And the neat thing is it's Bluetooth. Oh. So I can monitor the, the charge status of my battery and I can monitor the, the output of my solar panel. I can know when my batteries are in bulk mode or in float mode, and there's another mode in between, I forget. Um, so um, from left to right, we get the master switch, uh, the master fuse. Then we have a uh, shunt, which keeps track of the amount of energy going into your battery bank and coming out. So that gives you a pretty good awareness what percentage battery you have. Uh, then after that, I went with a uh, Victron um, bus bar system. So eat, there is four fuses in here. One's for the inverter. One might be, I forget now what, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I think that the AC to DC charger. One is a, a, the branch circuits for everything that gets fed throughout the trailer. And the other one is inputs for the uh, DC to DC uh, charger in the solar. Mm -hmm. um, so, in other words, we have another four breakers right there to keep things uh, um, split up. Sure. Get the Orion DC to DC <coughs> charger in the What that's for is uh, I can pull power off my truck's alternator. Mm. And uh, that, will com that will upgrade the whatever voltage comes through there up to the voltage required to properly charge your lithium uh, mm. ion phosphate batteries. Uh, and that's a 30 amp. I also have one inside my truck to run the house battery there, and that's just an 18 amp. Hmm. And then we have the um, solar controller. Cool. When I designed this, I thought, this is a lot of money and components just to be stuck in the trailer. So I can yank this whole thing out in the battery bank and bring it in the house and use this backup. Oh, power. cool. Nice. So we can charge this up with a generator. Sure. Or whatever. Here is just put in place to hold our fire pit so it doesn't roam around and bump, bump into anything. So it won't touch anything else uh, nice. once I have it set around that. Our, we put, purchased this separately, then I had to figure out how to mount it to the roof rack. Yep. And I was one of those where hikers started cutting their roof rack bars right to the end. Yes, yep. Uh, so I had to take everything off, <laughs> buy new metal, just so I had the extra couple of inches. So you extended your poles 
in order to mount your 23-0 room? Yes. Oh, and now that's I'm gonna a lot do, more work. I'm going to do it again because with the moon shelter, moon shade, yeah. I want the long end going this way. Yes, which you can do it either way. Yep. Um, so I want to make some hard points that I can just put the eyelets on either the side tides, yep. this way. So you built the shelf. Yeah, um, Yeah. Cool. leftover cedar again. So kind of a neat thing. It just uses the same track as the side table. And then I basically did a, a folding leg. Yeah. And then extend it, done. Cool. It's a good place for shaving or Very nice. teeth or whatever. Yep. We haven't really washed dishes here. This is just a place to keep them during the day. Okay. And after that, we move it off. Put cold water in there, move it, pour the hot water in. Sure. And, then, and get the dishes done that way. Cool. And then it looks like you've got the water tank. Yeah, we got the, the <clears throat> uh, solar Seven. shower on top. Okay. And then we get the 21 gallon tank underneath, which will last you approximately six days. Okay. Because we almost ran out before I checked it. Mm. Um, so we had to do some strategies to make it last. Yep. And, uh, so do you like your road shower? The warmest shower we've taken has been 72 degrees. It's uh, too cold. So we haven't been able to use it in the summertime <clears throat> yet to, to fully enjoy it. But it's nice to have that extra spray. Yep. And then it looks like you got a solar panel on top. Oh, yeah. Um, we got a 30, 330 watt. Uh, rec, rec and peak or peak and rec solar um, panel on there. And I, I went with one large panel because I didn't want to start hooking up a bunch of small panels in parallel in the series and having all those points of failure type of connections and uh, potentially more than just the one entry point into the, into the camper. So it's been working out great. Um, this panel itself will top off the battery even he standing here in the shade that we got. Nice. So what kind of mods you do inside? When we brought the trailer home, it was always with the notion of starting from square one. Eventually, I removed the one shelf they had in the front and the three shelves in the vertical partition in the back. I just took them out. Ooh. Welcome to the interior. Wow, well, um, you've done a lot on the inside. A lot of mods. So when we ordered the camper, I asked them not to terminate any of the electrical wires. Mm. And they had to. They were required to. So, we had the one shelf going across, and they had a small switch panel right here. So, for months, I just scratched my head, how am I going to get that wire bundle? Well, first of all, what do the wires go to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you have to backward engineer all that. So, I got that figured out, and uh, then I had to figure out how I was going to get the wires down to the switch panel down on the shelf. So, eventually, and, and everyone should know... You don't want to penetrate the ceiling at all because this is very thin plywood so they can bend it. So I had to do so in a manner that didn't penetrate. So I made this device, which is actually has a hollow channel on the top side that I could route the wires down. And it got me down low enough where I could um, butt splice a bunch more wire. And once again, I can show you pictures. Um, so this is a false wall. Mm. Yeah, I just put some sleepers, half inch sleepers behind that. Nice. And um, I would say it's toolless that I can get it out, but I can't because I get screws up top holding it a horizontal um, board, which holds this whole thing in, in place. Sure. But on the side, I just got magnets. I put these boards up, the same on your side, just to hide the reveal there. Sure. So so yeah like I said so this is a, 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 a false wall where I made all the uh, connections with Anderson Popples mm. um, so that's how I was able to bring it all together when I built this shelf I terminated all the wires with the, the connectors so it's a modular fashion mm. so uh, I get you know three groups of wires here I, I, I broke them up so that we could figure out what things were in the dark Left side of the trailer, exterior uh, floodlight, um, mm -hmm. under trailer amber light. These all both they all have dimmers underneath, and then this is this light right here, the dimmer. 
and then I got a night light, the red light on the other side. I wasn't sure how my wife was going to take to a completely dark trailer, so I made that assumption. Of course, it wasn't for me at all, being scared out in the woods. <laughs> and then the right side of the trailer, same thing. Um, now, I do have one more switch up here. Um, there, that runs to the uh, outlet outside mm -hmm. for exterior light or whatever you want to plug out, plug out there. This is my first attempt at doing a, uh, an epoxy end light. So I do see something you got hidden though in the front here, down below here in the corner. Oh, what yeah, you got going there? So yeah, another power strip. Um, I wanted to keep it low visual profile, uh, and so I get to basically uh, another 12 volt. These things are pretty good because you can have 12 volt adapters, and you buy the uh, the plugs to whatever suits your needs. Yep. So USB Cs. Um, more Anderson power port and a voltage plus more USBs. And this bugger's bright. I can't turn that off. So tape for you, my friend. Yeah, it's hard to sleep with blue light shining in your face. Yep. Yeah, you can get those with a switch you can talk about. Yeah, and I have that elsewhere in the trailer, but yep. I just have to take the module out and refit it. Sure. Now, I had a thought of I didn't want wires dangling in the front of the shelf's edge. Mm -hmm. So I uh, did this hole on the side. Oh, sure. Um, in practice, uh, it might have been more work than it was worth because uh, then you have all this wire. Yeah. Above or below. So yep. unless you can find one foot wires. Reason for a brand new sticker right here. Ooh. Look at that. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's a good sticker. Yep. yep. And our iPad. Yep. And in your case, you have yours mounted up front. Yep. Ram mount. And I thought, that's oh, from me being way back there to wash <laughs> way out there. <laughs> And I thought about maybe suspending something from here, you know, and out with ram mount you know, conversions. Sure. But that requires a bar going across because you don't want to drill anything up at the ceiling. And I actually have an idea for that whole space I don't want to occupy yet. Okay. So that's like a winter project. Um, so I thought about making a, a lap desk. So if we were to turn this upside down, we have a nice flat surface to just to write or read or whatever. Flip it around, we get the ram out, and uh, you adjust the uh, the elevation so it's comfortable for both of you to watch. Perfect. And it's a lot closer, so effectively yep. we have a larger screen. That is really really nice. And then it could sit here if you wanted to, right? It does. In fact, when we travel, <laughs> do you travel with it up? This okay. comes off. We'll put this up here. Okay. Either up there or down below. Yep. Uh, and you the can... step stools come up. We actually have a 550 cord that stretches over. And we strap it. Oh, uh, sure, sure. So it doesn't slide back. Sure, that makes sense. Yep. So I saw that you have like a peg that it sits down in. Yes, the dowel rides so, in. Um, I wanted to do something like that, uh, but what I ended up doing was just making my own brackets, and the dowel fits all the way through. Oh. And sure. I have a screw on the top. Did it. Oops. Oh, now I did it. Diane does that. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so let's see if I can do. It. Not like it was, but it will do. So that was one of the mods there. Um, now, uh, since I had the luxury, I guess you'd call it luxury of designing my vertical wall in the back, um, the, the greatest challenge was the maximum size galley opening that would allow me to conceal the doors when they were um, all the way out to the side. Sure. So, you know, this is slightly different. Uh, dimension than uh, the way it comes yep. but uh, I was never a big fan with the huge fillets yep. that, that comes from the manufacturer so that was also an impetus about uh, motivating me for doing that so uh, nice so since I had to do that and I know I wanted the storage above um, the, the partition above the shelf that's removable okay so so we can take that out and have a clear pass through if we wanted very cool uh, before I mounted this in place, I put the bungee mounts in there. They're just uh, picture hanger um, holders, sure. and then you just space it out to get the pattern you want. And it, and coming up, came out okay. Very nice. So, uh, and this is pretty cheap on online. So, and a couple of reading lights. Got and a couple of dimmable reading lights. Uh, and then your little shelf there—that's where the battery's at. Yeah. 
We haven't used the interior shelf at all. Okay. But you can pop it open. Oh, there's a heater. That's where it went. <laughs> oh yeah. So you have this space, extra space to throw books or sure. uh, uh, quadrant telemeters if anyone's interested in this sort of thing. <laughs> it's fun, fun stuff. So uh, and these are RFID latches. Oh. So in the off season, I'm gonna make this so it's, you need an RFID card to open up the shelf. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so uh, the battery bank it sits below that. Um, and it takes up three fourths of the distance. So I actually have space. I can add another 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate. Wow. If I was to do that, and you don't need that in the trailer. I think maybe 200 amps is the most you ever need. Yep. Um, but if I was to do it again, I'd get the heated batteries. Oh, sure. So that, you know, you have more options on off season camping. So. All right, so what do you got going on up here with this? rain protection you got on your 23 zero 270 awning here looks like you got some kind of rain gutter protection yeah i got a, sort of a rain gutter i've seen some of the other options people have done and uh and i wanted to uh, do the same i just didn't know how to do it i didn't want to stick any noodles up there because that was kind of an imperfect solution so i got online and found um awning repair material that fit exactly into the c channel that uh, some of these awnings have, certainly 23 zeros have them. Um, so the question was just cutting it to length and making it fit with uh, the obstacles you have in the way. Um, so I started with the back, we'll get there eventually. And then I wrapped around the one long panel here and just cut slots to accommodate the, uh, the roof rack. Mm -hmm. And I had made overlay so that the next panel overlays on material from this one. Nice. And it tucks underneath the rope that's holding the back one in place. Very nice. And, and so, you know, this is what it looks like. It actually comes in like 46 inch length and it has um, a plastic device inside so you can make the, uh, the hard mount. But it also has one on the opposite side. It's made for the RV awnings uh, for the bump outs. Mm. So they bump out a short distance and this covers the top. Okay. So I just cut it to length as desired. So you Very can buy cool. them in any length you want. And uh, this one's tied off at the ends and it also fits into a C channel on the other side of this bar nice. at the top. So. Very nice. No splashing, no water, no, no nothing. No. It's, uh, it's a nice solution. And that enables this space to be used for momentary here let me put this down just yep. tuck it away up there by the flat surface all right well thank you for a tour of your trailer you well, put thanks a lot for of having time, me. time and energy into this thing yeah this i never thought amazing. i'd be in this position to show off my trailer <laughs> but uh, it was fun doing so thank well, you well i think your your trailer here will be an inspiration to others so. i i hope so that i can take more inspiration off them there you go. Perfect. <laughs> that's how it goes we'll talk to you later thanks thank you